When I listen to Audible, I'm not cooking dinner for one. I'm on horseback, galloping across the Scottish moors towards my one true love. There, through the mist, I see my beloved, kilt flapping in the breeze. The fibers of his shirt struggle against his bulging muscles as he takes me from my horse and... My frittata! Go to audible.com slash start trial and your first download is free. Audible. Stories that surround you. The following is a NEC NFL Draft Bible exclusive. Welcome back. This is Dave Schumann live talking today with Stardust founder Troy Rudiger uh, about sports and technology. Got about a half-hour show for you again, brought to you by NFLDraftBible.com and NUCSportsMag.com. Get 50% off for a lifetime membership. Go to NUCSportsMag.com or NFLDraftBible.com and put in football2016 as your code. The sports tech guys, we've been on a little hiatus. This is the first show of the of the actual fall. All kinds of things going on in the technology field right now. Um, A lot going on with respect to, we have the NFL that has just started. Um, So some new technology that is coming into play. But with respect to that, uh, we have a bunch of stuff uh, with respect to virtual reality and augmented reality. And I think a really interesting thing that has happened with the Pokemon uh, stuff which is originally was a major, obviously a major windfall from a financial standpoint um, and a huge fad, in my opinion, of its growth. And we'll see if it continues to to stay, but it's now 27th on uh, Apple, on actual Apple uh, iTunes downloads, which means there is a significant drop in the amount of people that are going on uh, Pokemon and playing the augmented reality game. But obviously, many companies now are scrambling to put stuff together because of that. Uh, The reason why in sports and technology is all kinds of things going on that are going to become very, very, very prevalent in the next couple of years. Uh, Twitter is, is, is flirting right now with live streaming agreement with Apple TV. That could be interesting and combining some sports uh, streaming rights and sports streaming is becoming huge from the NFL level all the way down to the high school level. It is something that is radically beginning to change the game uh, from that standpoint. The second uh, thing that we have as far as news and what's going on uh, today from a sports and technology standpoint is the idea of virtual referees. So having uh, referees that are assisting the game live from a virtual standpoint um, and referees that may be replaced to a certain extent by the uh, virtual reality technology, that's, that's a new thing that's, that's coming about. Uh, soccer and the MLS are going to be using uh, live video reviews uh, on, on everything. They just announced that. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff going on there. Obviously, in the analytics area, uh, motion technology and data, which is becoming bigger and bigger in the training space. Um, People are now tagging those motion tracking devices, not just to track the number of steps they take anymore, but the impact of their worker to help them work smarter in the gym. And wearables are becoming more and more the norm from a technology standpoint uh, in the athletic arena. Uh, And then finally, I I think of some of the interesting news of the day, uh, just covering a broad scope before we we have on our guest. Um, We are talking about the University of Texas going on and unveiling its new mobile app for sports fans and how that's going to begin to impact things um, uh, from a standpoint of what is mobile technology going to be in, from now and going forward 
from a virtual standpoint, from an augmented reality standpoint, and most importantly, from a fan interaction standpoint. We want the information now. We want it live. We want it uh, up to date. And a lot of the colleges who have used some of the older technologies with respect to, to mobile devices are going to have to upgrade that experience because we want to be able to get our, our replays immediately. We want to be able to get uh, our information immediately. We want to be able to get our score updates immediately. And I'm continually frustrated with the ideal that it takes so long for me to get that information from memory mobile devices don't want to only have to go to NFL.com to get that information. I want to be able to go to the team's personal mobile app to get that information. And in the college standpoint, I 100% want to because the NCA and the conferences do not have anywhere near the technology to be able to give me everything I need on my team. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on uh, Troy Rudiger, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the sports tech space. What's going on, Troy? David, how are you? Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Ah, no problem. No problem. We're, we're kicking back off the fall season. We took a little hiatus uh, from <clears throat> sports tech, and uh, we gave it a little time for some new and interesting things to happen. And I want to yeah. get you back on to talk about those things. Um, you know, I've, I've watched your some of your uh, Snapchat takeover. Um, you know, there's a bunch of di- – wildly interesting things going on in sports and technology and happening at a very fast rate with a lot of companies that no one probably knows about. So uh, yeah. with that, you know, wh- wh- why don't you give me a little bit of a roundabout of some of the exciting things that you guys are doing at Starters and, and some of the interesting things you're seeing? Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, thanks again for having me on. Um, obviously, with, with football season with kicking football off here, season kicking off here. Uh, um, sorry, there's an echo. The... Um, the, the focus has been on, uh, you know, fan engagement. So the fantasy sports, uh, daily draft, um, you know, we're seeing even despite uh, the legal issues and uh, kind of uh, issues that the uh, fantasy sports industry has been facing um, leading into the football season, FanDuel just raised like $270 million um, kind of gearing up. So um, it's exciting to see a lot. Yeah, again, a lot of the focus has kind of been on the fantasy sports and the betting side of things. Um and, uh, yeah, that's for us. That's, that's kind of been the main focus is the fan engagement type stuff. How can you leverage data to make uh, the fan experience on game day more pleasurable, more desirable? Um, there's a company that we're working with currently, Hunter Swinson, who hosts a, a number of our different Snapchat takeovers and uh, First Look, which is a reoccurring sports tech wrap-up series on our Snapchat account. Uh, his company, Paranoid Fan, basically collects data uh, about game day experiences so you can go on their app and before you enter the stadium it'll show you points where you can go park your car where you can set up for a tailgate where you can find uh, food beverages um, different things like that so everything from you know buying my ticket uh, leading up to the game and then the time you have uh, before the game and then actually you know attending the event uh, outside and inside the stadium and then afterwards uh, people are really trying to collect as much data as possible and learn how these fans are interacting with these experiences and how they can basically improve those, those experiences. So that's kind of, that's, uh, again, I think leading into the football season, that's been the focus of a majority of the, the sports tech space and, and people working in it. Well, what's been the reception um, to, I, I guess, from, are they going to the colleges? Or are they going to the NFL teams? Uh, to, to, to set up these programs and what's been the reception to it? Yeah, it's interesting. We were actually having this discussion the other day. Um, you know, if you look at tech industries, uh, specifically outside of sports, um, one of the main metrics that tech companies look at is acquisition. So how can I acquire a user to come use my product? Um, the sports industry is really different in that, um, you know, as a organization, as a business, um, you're not really looking to acquire users. You have fans. You have a, a built-in user base, um, and it doesn't really, you know, it's not conducive to um, the teams being willing to kind of find new ways or more efficient ways to essentially acquire users. It's more of a, um, you know, I have these fans, um, and, and they're just kind of built in. There's nothing I really have to do extra outside of what I'm already doing. So the reception on the on the organizational side, I think, has been um, – you know, these tech companies approaching and saying, I have this more efficient way that you can leverage selling season tickets, um, you know, making the experience better for fans when they come to your games. 
And the reception there has been kind of, you know, I'm already doing that. You know, I'm selling out season tickets every every year. Why do I need to add anything else? Um, so that's that's kind of the perception that we're hoping to change a little bit and say, you know, these teams, they don't have CRM systems for selling season tickets. Um, any data to determine who their fans are and how they can leverage, uh, you know, that data in terms of selling them specific things um, and optimizing uh, their current market. Um, and it's just kind of, yeah, I think it'll be gradual kind of step-by-step step, really trying to kind of push for, um, you know, teams and organizations being more willing to adopt these new tech and, and new systems and, and processes for selling and, and engaging with their fans and their, their fan base. So I think that's the, the, the key distinction there between the sports industry and other industries uh, in tech is, um, you know, you don't have to acquire users. Again, it's just kind of a built-in fan base. So I think the the push in tech and these other things like Paranoid Fan has really been coming from the fan side uh, of things. So people who are fans who also understand tech have been kind of more pushing uh, tech into sports outside of, you know, more so than the organizations and the teams themselves. Um you know what's what's interesting about what you said now is that is that primarily they're working with the college side versus the NFL side because I would be, so I guess the do, do NFLs not have CRM systems involved in selling um, uh, yeah. their tickets? Really? No, they don't. It's insane. I mean, it's it's really. I mean, you go. I mean, we were speaking with someone the other day who has a uh, a venture fund um, who makes a lot of or looks to make a lot of investments in the early stage sports tech startups. Uh, specifically in, in kind of making the business aspect of, of running a sports organization more efficient. And, um, you know, they're, they're meeting with the NBA, um, you know, certain NBA teams, and they're still using Excel spreadsheets to kind of uh, keep tabs on people that are buying season tickets and and uh, and things like that. So it's, it's again, I think um, being that the focus hasn't been acquisition for sports teams, they're not really forced to find new uh, and more efficient ways to kind of leverage uh, their fan base. Um yeah, it's there. There, there's no need to for them from their perspective. That is absolutely mind-boggling because they sell out. They don't leverage the opportunity to build a relationship and don't know who their actual, don't know a ton of things about their actual customer, the way right. that a traditional <laughs> business want to know it would want to know like you know Amazon would want to know everything they could um, right. about. Right. Every- Thing that there is to do about their customers so they could sell more. So could, right. could, could theoretically these teams be leaving a lot of money on the table? Of course, without a doubt. I mean, the, just because they're selling season tickets doesn't mean they're selling to everyone who would actually buy tickets. I mean, there are people who, um, you know, buy one off, say my girlfriend wants to treat me to a game um, and, and purchase tickets for me, she's not going to be the same person that's buying tickets over a, a certain period of time. So they can understand that, you know, this this is more of a one-off type of thing. They may, you know, send an email back to her and, and re-engage uh, during the time of maybe, say, my birthday um, or, you know, different things going on. Um, some of these other things that you can easily, this information about customers and consumers in, in terms of fans for sports teams, uh, if you understand this information, you can really engage outside of how can we just, you know, we sold out all of our season tickets. All right, we're done for the rest of the season. Um, it, it, I think, without a doubt, I mean, they're missing out on a lot of um, user acquisition and a, and a lot of money. Yeah, I guess VIP packages and 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 those kind of things, uh, sure. um, which they they probably do a little bit. They could probably get a lot more. And I mean, that's that's interesting because that tells me that. Sports is really a, a, a boom that, in a lot of cases, is just beginning. So um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, so outside it, of outside of the users uh, as well. I mean, there's there's just a tremendous amount of opportunity in terms of different tech that can be applied outside of fan engagement. I mean, uh, efficiency with the business side of, of running a sports organization, efficiency with um, operating your teams from a player perspective. Uh, you know. And in terms of everything, I mean, we're just seeing um, how tech can really play into and, and, and improve the sports industry. Now, when I go to a game, the thing that 
frustrates me is that there's no coordination of any one thing to another. The one thing they have with technology is scanning your ticket. That seems to be what they care about. Um, but outside the stadium, uh, you know, where I park, um, if I have a parking pass, making that a smoother process. How, how could technology really uh, speed up, you know, the way that we get into games, the way that we interact, the way that we find out about, um, you know, which might be uh, – there's nothing more I hate than going out and walking around the whole stadium to find the the apparel stand that has what I want, right? Because right? sometimes different ones have different things, but you don't know what's at what. How, how can technology begin to help that? Yeah, I think um, there's a few different things, um, particularly just in this last week we've seen um, the 49ers actually um, – actually, excuse me, it's the Dolphins that partnered with uh, uh, Uber to, you know, uh, bring fans to the game. So uh, some sort of partnership with Uber where um, fans that are going to the Dolphins game at their new Hard Rock Stadium uh, get some sort of discount, and they actually have, like, a, a tailgating package where they give them all kinds of Dolphins gear. Um, Amazon Prime actually partnered with the 49ers um, where they're uh, actually delivering uh, their uh, products to people at the uh, at the game. So, like, as at their tail park, at the, uh, at the tailgating, they can – get stuff delivered to them. Um, so different things like that, I think, from a fan um, engagement perspective in terms of kind of going to the game, um, inside the game and outside the game afterwards and before, uh, there's a number of different things that we can do. Uh, the stronghold that the teams have in terms of actually inside of the game and fan engagement there is, is kind of the difficulty uh, that Tech is facing. Um, it, it's like how can we infiltrate and kind of, help these teams uh, make that fan experience more enjoyable. Um, and I think we're just seeing, you know, kind of like the tip of that in terms of how we can leverage tech. Uh, another thing is obviously I mentioned before is Paranoid Fan, where they're collecting data um, about the uh, grounds of the stadium, like where can I park, where can I, um, you know, buy gear for the game, where can I set up a tailgate, where can I purchase food and beverages. Um, things like that. So I think over time, it, it'll just be a culmination of these number number of different things, um, and, and we'll kind of see where things fit. Um, and then the other component of that is these new stadiums that are being built with Hard Rock Stadium in Miami and, and Levi Stadium in, uh, out here in uh, California. Um, it's how can we incorporate tech actually into the stadium uh, and, and leverage that tech and make the, the fan experience enjoyable. So. Um, a, a few different things, but I think we're just hitting hitting the, the breaking point, I think, in terms of really getting teams to adopt new tech and, and be willing to try these new things. You know what would be cool? I, I, I'm sure fantasy sport, uh, uh, sports fans would love this. People want to go to the game, right? But if they go, you know, it's hard to track everything. Uh, it, it, it would be so cool if they had some sort of technology that allows throughout the state and people to, to see what they're doing, uh, you know, in fantasy, give, give, um, uh, give an update of, you know, what, what players stats are within the same, like you, you only get your team, right. But you bar- you barely get information about that. You got to go to your phone and then it's so hard to get, um, in mostly now in Stanford and probably the 49ers, this is not the case. But a lot of stadiums, the Wi-Fi is awful uh, if it's yeah. existent. And, you know, right. how, how do you go about improving those kind of things? I mean, that, that's a fundamental issue, you know. And, and when I've, I've been to Stanford games, been to 49ers game, they have decent, you know, pretty decent Wi-Fi, so you can do some some kind of interaction. But mo- almost everyone else does not. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely one of the difficulties they uh, with with trying to incorporate tech into the game day experiences, um, the lack of internet connection. Um, that's there's actually a few different companies that I know are working kind of in that space now, um, trying to deliver better internet service to fans in game. Um, you know, and with these other newer stadiums, they're actually building in, um, you know, places into the seats where you can you know, there's an iPad or, or whatever it is to be actually connected. Um, but I think in terms of, of a majority of people in tech that are working in, in on fan engagement and the fan experience on, on game day are kind of 
focus more on how can I, um, you know, leverage data to make, uh, you know, the, the physical experience of going to a game better. So how can I, um, you know, deliver food to that person in their seats? How can I get them uh, information in terms of when's the best time to get up and go to the bathroom or uh, how can I see the game better or see it through a different light in terms of uh, data that I can use to make the game more interesting. Um, so I, I think it's, uh, that, that's one of those things that are, that's really interesting in terms of uh, what we'll see in the future. Um, will it be me going to a game looking at my phone the entire time or will it be just a, a more enjoyable experience and, and will I be able to go and, and really attend and, and kind of cut off from my phone and, and you know, other connected devices? Right, absolutely, and, and that's that's obviously a, a a big issue, especially for Snapchat and we're Instagram stories, and we're we're doing everything that we can live within ourselves, um, and then to be actually enjoy get the chance to enjoy the experience of a game the way it should be is, is yeah. sometimes difficult. What what is um I, I guess is a good question for you, the battle with Instagram stories versus uh, Snapchat's. Uh, um, stories, I guess. Uh, yeah. How, what is that battle there? And, you know, I'll give a good example. I go on Instagram stories and with some of my bigger followings, I post a, 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 something live on that and it gets, for me, 10 times the amount of views that Snapchat does. Is, you know, what what right. do you think is, is going to happen in the future with those two beginning to compete? Yeah, I think, you know, over time we've seen, uh, especially with, with social media, um, these companies, larger companies that have an audience already built in, um, they they all just kind of do do what uh, each other does. So if you look at every single feature across Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, Instagram, they all kind of uh, jump on board. Once someone builds a feature that, uh, you know, they see their audience enjoying or, or benefiting from, they all kind of come on board. So I wouldn't even be surprised if, if Twitter announces some sort of um, story feature similar to Snapchat or, or Instagram. There's actually news or, or kind of rumors um, that Apple was working on something themselves um, similar to Snapchat or Instagram stories. Um, but, yeah, it, it doesn't surprise me at all. I think it's just it's just another outlet. Um, we saw... A, a, a few years ago, I think Mark Zuckerberg actually wanted to buy Snapchat. Um, the CEO uh, Spiegel said no, and <laughs> that was kind of their their um, their way of, of kind of combating that was they couldn't buy Snapchat, so they just built it. Uh, but again, I think over time we'll see all these uh, social media apps uh, and businesses will catch on and, and kind of do the same thing that everyone else does. Yeah, and I think that's the danger. You, uh, a Vine at one time was a rock star uh, social media app. And right. uh, when Instagram became and Snapchat really came to the forefront, that changed dramatically. So yeah. could Snapchat be in jeopardy because um, of Instagram stories? Is there, is there room for multiple players in that industry, will people get tired over time, do you think, of going, okay, let me post this one, same thing just to Instagram stories that I just posted to Snapchat two seconds ago, because that's basically what I find myself doing. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, no, I... Uh, capture both audiences. I, I, right. No, I think it's you and a lot of other people, too. I think um, in terms of... Snapchat kind of being in jeopardy, I, I definitely don't see that happen. I mean, they have been killing it in, insanely. Uh, they've been doing insanely well. Uh, I saw projections the other day. It said, like, 2017, Snapchat's looking uh, at, like, a billion dollars in revenue, um, So, I, I, which is incredible. I mean, that's outside of the money that they've already raised and, and kind of that's, that's revenue that they're projecting on bringing in. So Snapchat's not going anywhere. Um, if, if Instagram Stories does kind of kill uh, the the desire for people to jump on Snapchat and, and make stories. I think they'll find something else to do. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think you know, I, I think um, Snapchat's definitely here to stay. Uh, and if it's not stories, they'll find something else for sure. Yeah, there's no. Well, I, I've noticed that 
they've become huge with like breaking like gossip almost, you know, through Snapchat. Yeah. They're celebrities. That's kind of I've seen as a interesting niche, which yeah, definitely. You know, which I think is, is going to continue to uh, be interesting, especially with Facebook tr- launching that celebrity platform thing, which I don't think really has taken off um, right. the way they, they probably have hoped because Snapchat, those celebrities are already on there and they're just snapping and why, why go use another thing, you know? And, right. and that's, you know, that's, that's become um, – uh, some of the interesting stuff with technology. What uh, with, with starters? What, tell me, what, tell me what's hot with starters right now. What, you know, what are you guys focusing on? Yeah, so we're. I'm actually out in Los Angeles right now. I've been out here for the past two weeks, about a week and a half now. Um, my co-founder of Starters is, is based full time out here. So I came out here to kind of. He's mainly working on the products of Starters.co, the website, and kind of how we're engaging with our community. He's been focus on that so it's been good for me to come out here and, and kind of help them out look at the product and and see where we are how we can improve over the next few months we've been taking a ton of meetings we've been meeting with the dodgers accelerator um a bunch of angel investors and people out here in, in la um tomorrow we're actually headed up to san francisco so we're going to be at TechCrunch disrupt uh we'll meet with some people out there upload vr which is a uh, basically a community that's dedicated to um advancing virtual reality um it's similar it's probably one of the most similar things to starters in terms of what exists today i would say if we had to kind of uh you know describe starters in in terms of something that exists already and and allow other people to understand kind of what we see it as being is definitely upload vr so we'll meet with them um but yeah we we have a ton of stuff going on we have uh snapchat we're we're doing really well at uh we're we're really focused on kind of being consistent with that. So uh, Hunter Swinson, as I mentioned, the, the one of the founders of Paranoid Fan, he's doing um, Snapchat Takeover. is a, a reoccurring episode uh, called First Look. Every Sunday on Snapchat, he goes through and uh, picks the top ten sports tech news stories and kind of goes over them, discusses them, and um, it's, it's news stories from the community. So every day people come and post sports tech news stories on starters.co. They upvote and comment all these stories, and then at the end of the week, Hunter uh, goes through and picks the top ten, and we all discuss those. Um, so definitely check that out at uh, Starters TV on Snapchat. Um, and uh, yeah, we're again we're focused on on the product and, and improving over these next few months, and, and really continuing to grow and, and really pushing sports or tech into sports. Um, I have a question. It might sound crazy. How does starters as a business? What's the business model there? I'm always curious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no worries. So yeah, that's a question we get a lot. So um, at the time being, we're venture funded. Um, we were making a little bit of money um, with people actually joining the community. So when we started the community, uh, the intention wasn't to just bring in everyone that we possibly could. We really wanted people that were engaged and making decisions actually in the sports tech industry. Um, so we were charging a membership fee, and we said, you know, all the exclusivity is not really our priority. Um, you know, we want people that are actually committed to helping us grow this community and have a stake in uh, building uh, a beneficial community. So the $19 was kind of a paywall there. It was just an arbitrary number that we set. Um, so everyone, you know, there weren't people that would join just to join. It was people that really wanted to, to help us build a, a beneficial community. So that kind of got us by for a little bit at the beginning. Um, once we really started to take off and see the engagement with the community and the amount of really successful and, and you know, big-name people that we had engaged with our community, um, interest, you know, from investors and, and people in, in tech uh, really, you know, heightened. So there was people that were looking to kind of get involved. And um, so time being, we do have a small amount of venture funds uh, from a small boutique equity firm in New York who's funding us. Um, Long-term monetization strategy, we're still kind of trying to figure out whether it's some sort of consulting uh, business where we're helping teams find uh, opportunities with different tech companies um, or it's some sort of membership fee uh, you know, we're, we're kind of bouncing those ideas around, but we're, we're really, I think over the past week and a half and just us being out here, the whole team from starters is out here in LA. Uh, we've really been 
able to kind of nail down what it is our, our value add um, is to people in sports and people in tech. And um, we're finally starting to, to really realize and understand what it is our value is and how we can hopefully monetize that and then continue to sustain because we want to, you know, we, we're very passionate about what we're doing and we love, um, you know, pushing tech into sports and, and we want to obviously continue to do that. So in order to do that, like as any business does, you have to make money in some way. So um, <laughs> I will, when we have that monetization strategy, the strategy locked down, I'll, I'll make sure to let you know. <laughs> very cool. It's cool that you can go and uh, be able to, uh, to build something while you're trying to figure that out. <laughs> now, everybody yeah. Has, I love yeah. you. Good that you guys are in that, that, that position. So, well, yeah, I, I very appreciate fortunate. You. Yeah. I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and, uh, uh, going through. It's always great to get your insight. Um, your insight is definitely, I mean, you're one of the forefront people in sports uh, tech, um, which is Thank definitely you. an emerging marketplace that everyone's trying to figure out right now. Right. So, um, yeah. Cool. Very cool. But thank well, you for well, coming David. on. Tell, tell everybody yeah, where thank you find so you. much for having me. What's that? Yeah, where, where can everybody find you? Yeah, thank you again for so much for having me. I appreciate it. It's always good speaking with you. Um, definitely follow me on Twitter, uh, at Troy underscore Rudiger, R-U-E-D-I-G-E-R. Um, and that's probably the best place. You can you can follow the Starters uh, account, too, on Twitter, which is at Starters HQ. Um, and that's the best place to kind of keep up with everything we have going on. So, again, appreciate it. It's always good speaking with you. I really enjoy our conversation. So, um, looking forward to to the next time. No doubt. Thanks, Troy. Have a great day. Awesome, David. Thanks, you too. Well, that wraps up the Sports Tech Show. We had Troy Ruger on. Uh, a great quick episode, uh, 30 minutes of Quick hitting information, some roundabout news in the sports tech field. Uh, touched on some great topics, especially that I always intrigued about which social media is going to win. It's always, you know, it's amazing to me um, how much money gets spent in the space. It's amazing to me how people are working to get traction. And then I was just really, I thought we touched on with the CRM systems and the sports teams. For you tech guys out there, there's a business opportunity right there a real live business opportunity to help get a lot of these colleges and pro teams on CRM systems that can integrate with what they're doing so they can take tackle more opportunities. Have a great day. Till next week on the Sports Tech Guys, this is David Schumann signing off. The following is a NEC NFL Draft Bible exclusive. For those of you who follow us, make sure you check us out at iTunes. If you like the show, please give me some stars, give me some love, give me some comments. And every little bit helps. We appreciate that. You can go find us right at NUC Media on iTunes. We're also on some of your favorite, favorite listening platforms um, like TuneIn and soon to be on iHeartRadio. Again, David Schumann, we look to see you then next time. Thank you. When I listen to Audible, I'm not cooking dinner for one. I'm on horseback, galloping across the Scottish moors towards my one true love. There, through the mist, I see my beloved, kilt flapping in the breeze. The fibers of his shirt struggle against his bulging muscles as he takes me from my horse and... My frittata! Go to audible.com slash start trial and your first download is free. Audible. Stories that surround you. Every day, there are so many missed business opportunities. Sorry, left that file on my work computer. So many barriers to working together. Sorry, can't access that file on my phone. But today, Microsoft Office 365 offers lots of new features to help you be productive anywhere. Like editing office files on phones and tablets, easy one-click video conferencing, a free terabyte of secured cloud storage. Sorry, uh, wait, I mean, really? Wow, that's awesome. Go to tryofficenow.com to start your free 30-day business trial of Office 365. That's tryofficenow.com.